just sent a picture out on Instagram. Basically, I just said you could ask me anything that you wanted. I know that I had way more Instagram comments and I've done a lot of Twitter already. I'm gonna go up to the beginning because I feel like people that asked first should be more up there. Okay, the very, very first one that I got on Instagram was at Helena Watson 1502. If you could eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Probably chocolate covered strawberries. I was actually just having this conversation with someone because I love chocolate covered strawberries and pina coladas. The pina coladas that you can get. Oh, and guacamole. Yeah, it's a weird mix. Franny Clark says, what place in the world do you want to visit next? I really want to visit Greece. I have been craving a trip to Greece for a while now, so if I could just pick anywhere and snap my fingers and be there right now, there, that is where I would pick. Daisy Brooks asks, how many pillows do you sleep with? I actually only use one pillow when I'm sleeping. Like if I'm watching a show or if I'm reading a book, I always want lots of them around me, but when I'm actually sleeping, it kind of hurts my neck to have more than one, so I just do one, and I sleep on my side mostly. Um, sometimes my stomach, but it's kind of hard because it just is. Okay. Um, In the Sky with Diamonds says, how was your relationship with Blair growing up? Blair and I actually did not have a very good relationship growing up. We were not close. We can actually pinpoint the exact day that we became friends. It was when I was home from college over Christmas break one year. I don't remember which year, but I took her shopping, like we went to the mall together, I drove her. We stopped and we ate at this restaurant that was her favorite restaurant that I had never been to. And we kind of like girl talked, sister talked for the first time. And I like told her some stuff about my boyfriend and like kind of opened up to her for the first time and she opened up to me. And it was literally the first time that we connected on a friendship level and from there we were just close it was really weird so if you have relationships with your siblings where you're just like I'm really jealous of people that just have best friends of their siblings from the beginning like from when they're really little but if you don't there's still hope for you a male 12 says how's life like getting a lot of hate from some people it's fine sometimes it gets to you more than others but like I said in an earlier question you just learn to look past it and you just, yeah, you just, it stops bothering you as much after a while. Anna Barbro says, what is the story behind calling pinecone pinecone? So pinecone is, okay, so pinecone was my Christmas present to myself and pine cones are baby Christmas trees. And so I named him after a baby Christmas tree, except pine cones aren't actually baby Christmas trees, they're baby pine trees. But I honestly thought they were baby Christmas trees when I named him that. And then it ended up sticking and before I knew it, he was a full-time pine cone. Courtney Lane says, on a scale from one to 10, how much of a cat lady are you? Um, I would say like a five because I am in love with my cat. But I only have one cat. I also think that for me, I like to have a balance between being a cat lady and not being a cat lady. So I would say a five, because at least I'm aware of it, right? Gwen Tur says, what is your favorite childhood memory? Oh my gosh, I have so many. I had a really good childhood and I was really, really close to my parents. Speaking of cat lady and cat stories, um, when I was a little girl, I really wanted a kitten and my mom was really against getting a kitten. She just, she wanted me to get a puppy. She didn't like cats. And my dad had grown up with cats and so my dad was a little bit more open to the idea, but my mom basically was like, no, we're gonna get her a dog or a hamster or a fish or something, not a cat. And my dad actually went behind her back and for my sixth birthday got me my first cat, Mr. Furball. And the day that I got Mr. Furball was like the happiest day in my childhood. Like it was, because I didn't, I had been told for like a long time that I couldn't have a cat. Like for two years, I think I had begged for a cat. I remember my whole like tiny aged life was basically me wanting a cat and my mom saying no. And it's funny because my mom doesn't say no about anything. It was just this one thing. And my dad went and behind my mom's back got the cat for me. And it was, looked just like pinecone basically. It was a white Persian with blue eyes and his name was Mr. Furball. And then he got eaten by a coyote actually um, two days before I left for college freshman year and it was the most traumatic thing to ever happen in my childhood. Not trying to belittle real tra tragedies, but to me it was because that was, yeah, he was like my, my baby. Respect Your Life says, how do you get motivated when you're blue? So I am 
a big believer in that you have good days and you have bad days. And when you have bad days, sometimes you hang on. <laughs> He's just running amok. Sometimes you have to let yourself have a bad day. And obviously not if you have things you have to do, if you have work you have to go to, if you have to put on a happy face for whatever reason, then you have responsibilities you have to. But if it happens on a weekend or a day where you can embrace the feelings, I almost feel like letting yourself feel it is a way to cleanse it out of your system versus suppressing it, bottling it up, and then like a week later, you're so upset over everything that you end up exploding anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if that answered your question. How do you get motivated? No, that didn't answer your question because my answer was you don't get motivated. You let yourself feel blue. But yeah, if you have to push yourself through it, you just do what makes you happy. I make myself a cup of coffee and I sit in bed and I watch like 20 minutes of a TV show that I like, like Vampire Diaries or something. And that totally peps me up in the morning if I need a pep in my step. If not, I just have my coffee on my couch and that is my morning routine. Hannah Kate 04 says, how do you deal with being in the public eye but keeping your relationships private? In regards to both you and Blair, because I know you've never really talked about boys, but Blair was very open about her relationship with Sawyer and now she's very on the DL with dating, et cetera, since then. I just wanted to know how you manage that and whether you find it hard to keep it under wraps when filming or out places, et cetera, ha <laughs> ha. All right, so the reason that I keep it private is because I made a decision when I first started making videos, and I remember talking to my college housemates about this, to just not talk about relationships online. And the original decision came from me having a boyfriend in college, dating in college, and at first my online stuff was separate from my real life. Like, I didn't, not everyone in my real life knew that I was making videos. It wasn't something where I wanted to get on there and be broadcasting personal stuff about me. So everything was very surface. It was all like beauty stuff, but when I did vlog, it was about things that I liked, like movies I liked or situations, like funny stories that had happened to me, but it was never really about people. And that philosophy of how I kind of did my channel, carried on through leaving college, moving to LA, going through various relationships. And the thing is, I feel like once you bring a relationship into the public eye, then when it doesn't work out, there's, it's almost like you can't fully get away from it or heal from it because you're constantly being reminded of it. It's just a part of my personal life that I just always really wanted to keep private. And Blair had a different idea on that. And when she was dating Sawyer, she was the way she was and that's how she wanted to be. And she has become private now with her dating life. Um, as far as how I keep it under wraps when I'm in public with them, I don't really. I get stopped by viewers and subscribers in public when I'm with significant others and I mean I don't hide it so in real life it's just online I don't openly talk about it last one is going to be Sarah Banzreg what was your dream job as a child I wanted to be a professional scuba diver I don't know what I was thinking but I remember having a long conversation with my dad and him telling I was like really little and him telling me that I could be anything I want to be in the entire world and it was this long inspirational speech and then at the end he was like so what do you want to be and I was like a scuba diver. And I remember it very vividly because like I really wanted to be that and I thought that was like the coolest thing. So this video is so long and I'm gonna try not to edit any questions out because I feel like all the people that ask questions ask questions for a reason and want their questions heard. So if you guys are still watching this video, I love you for staying around for so long and watching it because it's a long video. And um, if you guys want more Twitter talk style videos let me know in a comment because i never know like how much you guys like watching these videos if you liked it i can do another one leave me a comment tell me did you like it and if you did like it you can leave your questions below and i'll use this video as my reference point for the next video yeah all right well i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time bye